Meet Lois Reese, a seemingly sweet and loving grandma who by all accounts lived a pretty normal life. She had a loving husband who she'd been married to for over 35 years. She raised her three kids with love and affection and played the part of a caring grandmother flawlessly. To the casual observer, Lois appeared to be entirely unremarkable, and nothing about her stood out or would have made you raise an eyebrow. A seemingly ordinary woman who lived a regular life in Minnesota. But what people often forget is that sometimes ordinary lives can harbor extraordinary secrets. This sweet old granny, with her endearing smile and gentle demeanor, was actually living a double life filled with dark secrets, shocking betrayal, and most chillingly, cold-blooded murder. This is the shocking case of Lois Reese. Lois Witt was born on February 28, 1962, in the serene city of Rochester, Minnesota, nestled alongside the South Fork of the Zumbro River. It was amidst this idyllic backdrop that Lois seemed destined to live a life that unfolded under the radar. But little did anyone know that this unassuming birthplace would be the starting point of a journey that would later shock the world. In 1982, she married the love of her life, Dave Reese, and the two would have three kids together. The two seemed to have a pretty solid relationship, supporting one another through all of life's joys and challenges. Dave's passion for fishing and the great outdoors led to him running his own bait and tackle shop, while Lois, with her nurturing nature, operated a daycare right from the comfort of their family home. Their lives seemed to revolve around family, hard work, and the simple pleasures of life in Minnesota. By the time 2005 rolled around, the Reese family had reached a new chapter in their lives. Their children had all grown up and moved out to begin their own journeys in life. Suddenly, the once bustling family home now seemed to echo with memories, and with their kids all grown, the house seemed too large for just the two of them. Embracing this new stage of life, Dave and Lois decided it was time for a change. They sought the tranquility of a smaller community and found their way to the charming town of Blooming Prairie, situated about 40 miles away. Here, amidst the warmth of a tight-knit and friendly community, they envisioned living out their retirement years. Life in Blooming Prairie seemed to be a perfect fit for Dave and Lois. Dave started a wax worm farm which would go on to be quite successful, while Lois ran a daycare out of the family's home. They both played an active role in their community and were well-liked around town. Lois participated in the local ladies' bowling league, while Dave generously lent his time to the Blooming Prairie's Servicemen's Club, solidifying their place as valued members of the community. To the outside world, the couple couldn't have been more perfect for each other, yet behind the scenes, things were brewing. What people didn't know is that Lois had a darker side. She had an unhealthy affinity for gambling, an affliction that had silently plagued their marriage for years. This secret obsession had slowly taken root and had steadily grown into a formidable addiction that quickly threatened the very foundation of their seemingly idyllic life. Lois's gambling addiction took a dark and desperate turn, leading her down a path of deceit and betrayal. As her insatiable desire for gambling overpowered the family's finances, she resorted to embezzlement to sustain her habit. One of her schemes involved manipulating Dave's store employees by deceiving them into contributing money for a golf cart she planned to buy for Dave's birthday. However, Lois shamelessly diverted these funds to fuel her addiction, leaving her husband's employees unknowingly funding her destructive habit. It's also believed that she squandered the money intended for her father's burial, as well a half a million dollar inheritance she received after her father's death. But perhaps the most shocking betrayal was her calculated manipulation of her very own sister during her most vulnerable state. When her sister suffered a mental breakdown due to her failing marriage, she sought refuge with Lois and Dave to heal. However, instead of providing genuine support, Lois saw an opportunity to exploit her sister's condition. She claimed that her sister was incapable of making decisions for herself, and cunningly applied to become her legal guardian. The court granted Lois full guardianship, and also granted her access to her sister's portion of their father's inheritance, which was around $200,000 at that stage. But that too quickly vanished into the pockets of the casinos. A social worker eventually grew suspicious of Lois's actions and removed her as her sister's guardian. Lois was ordered to repay her sister $100,000, although no charges were ever brought against her. The lack of charges brought against Lois only emboldened her destructive and deceitful ways, and the situation continued to escalate until it all reached a boiling point in March 2018. 
On March 23, 2018, police in Blooming Prairie received a strange call. On the other end of the line was a concerned employee who worked for Dave Reese. They told police that they haven't seen or heard from Dave for almost two weeks. They said that on March 12th, his wife Lois had come into his farm to inform them that Dave was ill and wouldn't show up to work. This was unlike Dave, but they figured he needed the rest. They said that over the course of the next two weeks, she'd pop into the business a couple of times telling them that Dave still wasn't well, before going to his office to do some work. The last time they saw Lois was on March 22nd when she got into Dave's car and seemed to be leaving town, so the very next day the employee thought to call the police. Police then went around to the house of Dave and Lois Reese, and after knocking on the front door without answer, they decided to walk around the house peering through the windows in the hopes of gaining insight into the situation inside. After spotting a light on in the bathroom, they looked through the window and immediately spotted what looked like a body laying under the blanket. They immediately entered the house and were confronted with the grim reality of Dave Reese's untimely demise. He'd been shot twice, once in the chest and once in the back. It was evident that Dave had been deceased for at least a week and a half, and he was already in a harrowing state of decomposition. It would later be revealed that the reason Lois had come to Dave's store during the two weeks, and while her husband's lifeless body lay in the bathroom, Lois was actually depositing business checks from Dave's shop into his personal account, and then withdrawing the money to fund her addiction. Police knew that Lois was their prime suspect, but unfortunately, they had no idea where she went. On the day that Dave's body was found, Lois was actually only 40 minutes away, at the Diamond Joe Casino in Iowa. She had bleached her hair white and after gambling for a while, she asked a store employee about directions driving south before disappearing off the police's radar. Five south, just to keep going on down to the next state. Is that the way to go, you think? I think so, because I think that goes 35, goes through, well, goes down to almost like past Omaha and all that. Okay, well, thank you. Yep. Two weeks after the tragic events in Blooming Prairie, Lois Reese found herself in a completely different world. 1,700 miles away in Fort Myers Beach, Florida. It was here that she befriended a woman named Pamela Hutchinson. Pam was actually in Fort Myers Beach to meet up with her friend, Donna Furtro. Donna's husband had recently passed away, and Pam agreed to accompany Donna across the state so that they could scatter her late husband's ashes in the Gulf of Mexico. Pam arrived in Fort Myers Beach three days before they were due to depart, so that she could spend some time attending to business matters of her own and she also took some time to let her hair down. One evening while at a bar, Pam crossed paths with Lois Reese. Their encounter sparked an instant connection, and the two women hit it off right away. Over the course of the next three days, Lois and Pam spent more time together, forming a seemingly genuine friendship. They dined out, relaxed in hot tubs, and ventured into various bars, enjoying each other's company. On April 6, 2018, the day that Pam was due to leave for the Mexican Gulf with Donna, her friend was unable to get hold of her. Thinking that Pamela had probably changed her mind about joining her, Donna set off without her. That same morning, the front desk at Pamela's condo received a call from Pam, requesting that they extend her stay in the condo for another three days. Unbeknownst to the clerk at the front desk, the woman who called to extend the stay in the condo was actually Lois Reese, while the real Pamela Hutchinson lay lifeless on the bathroom floor. It turns out that Lois actually spent the previous evening staying over in Pam's guest bedroom, and at some point during the night she had murdered Pamela. The next morning she assumed Pam's identity, even wearing her favorite hat, as she coldly set about executing a meticulously planned scheme. She went to withdraw $5,000 from Pamela's bank account, and then took Pam's car and drove 90 miles upstate and checked into the Hilton Hotel. At the hotel, she withdrew another $1,500 before setting her sights on the Cushada Casino Resort in Louisiana, where she indulged in a day of gambling and squandering the stolen funds. Three days later, when Pamela Hutchinson was due to check out of her condo back in Fort Myers Beach, the cleaning staff had gone to clean up the room when they came across the grisly scene. They found Pam's lifeless body laying on the bathroom floor, and it was clear that she'd been shot. 
Towels had been carefully placed against the crack under the door, and the thermostat had been turned down to the lowest setting. These sinister measures were apparently taken to delay the process of decomposition and to contain any potential odor, indicative of the killer's meticulous attempt to conceal the crime. Police also looked at CCTV from the condo, as well as of the ATMs where Pamela's cards were last used. It didn't take them long to identify a suspect, and it wasn't long until they confirmed that the woman in the footage was actually Lois Reese. As investigators delved deeper into the evidence, a chilling motive began to emerge. Not only were Pamela's bank cards and identification missing, but it was also discovered that Lois had taken her passport. This troubling revelation left the police with a grim suspicion that Lois had intentionally targeted Pamela as a means to steal her identity. It became increasingly apparent that she had carefully planned her actions, and police believed that she was on her way to the Mexican border. Search for a woman accused of killing a tourist on Fort Myers Beach now shifting to the border with Mexico. Law enforcement officers now scrambling to see if they can intercept her before she can try to sneak out of our country and into Mexico. Meanwhile, we're getting new information about what she did on Fort Myers Beach after cops say she killed a tourist just to steal her identity. Police launched an all-out manhunt and tried to retrace Lois's steps. They were able to trace her all the way to Houston, Texas, but this is where their trail went cold. Police were starting to worry that Lois was able to cross the Mexican border, but they nonetheless posted her face all over TV and alerted Border Patrol officers to be on the lookout for someone matching Lois's description, hoping that they could stop her before she skipped the country. Round about the same time, a woman named Donna showed up in the resort town of South Padre Island, located just 20 miles north of the Mexican border. Locals would recount that Donna was a friendly and fun-loving woman, striking up friendships with other middle-aged women traveling alone. As you have probably guessed, Donna was actually Lois. It's believed that it was at this resort town that Lois Reese was scouting her next victim, most likely looking for someone who resembled herself and whose identity she could steal in order to safely cross the Mexican border. She was in South Padre Island for more than a week before police would finally catch the break they had been waiting for. A manager at a restaurant where Lois was eating that evening recognized her from the pictures on the news, so he immediately called the local police and informed them that Lois was at the restaurant. Police were there within a couple of minutes and Lois was arrested without incident. We begin with developing news out of South Padre Island this morning where just hours ago police and U.S. Marshals arrested a woman wanted for killing her husband and a woman. Reese had been on the run since late March. She's accused of fatally shooting her husband and their Minnesota home, then killing a woman in Florida and assuming that woman's identity and stealing her vehicle. In December 2019, as part of her plea agreement to avoid the death penalty, Lois Reese plead guilty to the first-degree murder of Pam Hutchinson. She was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The following year, in August 2020, Lois Reese pled guilty to the murder of her husband, David Reese. She told the court that she had struggled with her gambling addiction, and it had led to depression and a breakdown in her marriage. She said that it got so bad that she once tried to commit suicide but ultimately survived. She told the court that on that fateful day in March 2018, she and her husband had attended one of her grandkids' basketball games. She said that they started arguing in the car, and the argument lasted all the way to their house. She said that when they got home, Dave handed her a loaded gun and told her to kill herself, and that maybe she would be able to do a proper job this time. Lois said that she then took the gun and instead shot her husband. The judge sentenced Lois to life in prison without the possibility of parole.